So I was born in 1932, born in Topeka. I had a very fortunate childhood because that was all still country where I grew up at that time. And uh, my brother and I and a um, close neighbor would frequently go off and spend the day over in the hiking in the woods or on the sandbar on the Car River. And uh, it, was, it was a wonderful opportunity to grow up. And my dad, uh, of course, loved to ride horseback through the woods. And he was the one who, in many ways, encouraged us to learn about uh, the trees and we'd gather uh, gooseberries in the woods. I came to appreciate, I think, at that time just how much I loved living in the country. And um, so it was an influence that has been with me always and now sort of has gone full circle being really back out in the country. Now that she's retired following three terms in the U.S. Senate, Nancy Casabon Baker spends part of her time on a ranch that she owns in the Flint Hills of Morris County. Visiting her there, we ask her to reflect upon her years in office and how she became involved with politics. Well, I never ever contemplated myself running for office. I, I always enjoyed politics. I liked to hear uh, discussions and we frequently at the dinner table had discussions about current affairs of the day. Uh, and I always enjoyed hearing the political conversations. Um, and I majored in political science at the University of Kansas. At that time, I thought I would like to try and become a foreign service officer, and uh, sort of moved in that direction. And then, um, after I graduated from college, ended up with a job as a receptionist at Hallmark Cards. As Dad used to say, what can you do with a political science degree? <laughs> And uh, then uh, married, uh, and my husband, Phil Kassebaum, uh was completing his senior year at Michigan Law School. So that's when then I got a master's in diplomatic history at that time with the thought of perhaps teaching in college because I didn't have the education hours to teach in elementary or secondary school. And you couldn't be married and be a foreign service officer at that time. So I ended up neither teaching or being a foreign service officer and uh, raising, raising a family in Mays, Kansas, outside of Wichita. Raising four children kept Nancy well occupied while she concentrated on her responsibilities as a mother. She enjoyed taking the family on vacations to Colorado and serving as a 4-H leader, encouraging her children to share her love for animals and for the outdoors. As they grew older, her interest in education prompted her to run for a spot on the local school board. I did uh, run for the school board in Mays, um, and this is the children were all in school at that time. And uh, in those days, you really didn't you didn't spend any money or necessarily campaign a lot for being on the school board. Um, and I enjoyed it a lot, but that was in that was in the 70s. And I left then when I went to Washington in 1975 for a year on Jim Pearson's staff. And I did that because my husband and I were separated and thought that maybe this was a good time and with the support of everyone. And um, it, we, my youngest, my oldest son had started college by that time, and the others all went to school for a year in Washington and. Uh, really, we viewed it as sort of um, an opportunity to see uh, Washington and the surrounding area. And never planned to stay more than a year and came, I still, I was really glad to come home. And it was assumed that, uh, that Senator Pearson would run again. This was 1978. And when I came back and Senator Pearson announced he was not going to run, a friend said they thought it was a good time for a woman and I ought to think about it. She did think about it and after talking it over with her family decided to make a run for the Senate. She won the Republican primary and went on to defeat Dr. Bill Roy in the general election of 1978. And, you know Bill Roy was a I don't think he quite knew how to run against a woman. Running against a woman, if you got really too aggressive, you were viewed as being too tough and, you know, picking on somebody. I had a lot of people wondering if I would be tough enough. 
Um, I know the Kansas City Star said I sort of reminded them of an injured wren, and would I really be a very strong voice? And I've always said, well, it isn't the strong voice you need, it's the strong view of exactly what you bring to it, and you have to be yourself. She took office at a time when Republicans were in the minority during the last two years of the Carter administration. Although she was a new face on Capitol Hill, she gained an advantage when Senator Pearson stepped down a month early, giving her added seniority. This enabled her to land positions on committees dealing with issues that were of particular interest to her. I've always enjoyed working with the issues, and uh, so that's what I enjoyed the most. I cared a lot about education issues, and edu that's why going on the Labor Human Resources Committee, which handled education and health care, labor issues was such an interesting committee. And then foreign, foreign Relations Committee involved foreign policy, which I've always been interested in. I chaired the African Subcommittee on Foreign Relations, so I was lucky in getting some good committee assignments. I think in looking through the span of 18 years that I was there, uh, there, there have been a number. There have been a number of times that I worked with issues I cared a lot about. Some, and the higher you got in seniority, and the more, and particularly when you could chair, you you had the ability to have a lot more influence. As she progressed through her three terms in the Senate, Nancy Landon Kassebaum became an increasingly familiar name in American politics. Her straightforward style and affable character attracted many admirers one of whom, a fellow senator from Tennessee, would change her plans and her name as she headed toward retirement. When I announced I was not going to run for a fourth term, I really anticipated coming back here full time and, or, and babysitting seven grandchildren that I have, only two of whom are in Kansas. Um, and I had not contemplated getting married again. And so all of that happened rather suddenly and married Howard Baker, whose roots are just as deep in Tennessee as mine are in Kansas. Um, so split time now between both. Things come along that are of interest and I sort of end up then, my children said, Mother, just say no. <laughs> to him. But you know, there's sort of long held interest, particularly right now, uh, trying to lend some efforts to raising money for the uh, Tall Grass Prairie uh, National Preserve. Uh, a piece of legislation, again, worked on almost all of the 18 years in one form or another. But that's right in the next county, and I used to say, well, I'll maybe just be a docent in the Tall Grass Prairie <laughs> Preserve and help take tours through. But. Um, I, I love it out here, and uh, it's, it's uh, very quiet and peaceful.